Can the church overcome child abuse scandals and bad investment schemes? Stay tuned and find out now. Please follow our interactive conversation on Twitter by following at Solutions TV and the hashtag at the top of the screen. Get your pen, get your paper, get your tablet, call a friend or colleague to join you. The journey to economic dignity and solutions begins right now. We'll be right back. Welcome to Solutions, the definitive source for vetted economic dignity, knowledge, and access. Our collaborative journey towards our definitive purpose begins right now. I want to encourage you today and speak prophetically into your life that this painful and necessary shift and intentional change in our lives, families, communities, government, businesses, and churches will be counted toward our manifest destiny. We're continuing our conversation on Occupy the Church. Today's topic is repositioning for transformation. We are instructed by our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to occupy, to do business until I come. Not just business within the four walls of our churches, but to take up space in every sector and relevant issue in society. Romans 12 and 2 directs us to do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Welcome to all of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank it's you, good, good to have you. You can follow this conversation, interact with us via Twitter, Facebook, eFactor, and LinkedIn. Bishop, I'm going to start with you. Well, I'm Bishop Alan Wiggins, and I'm the senior pastor of the Hope Church in Orlando, Florida. Uh, my dad is the founder of that ministry, and I have been senior pastor for the last decade. I'm also the executive director of the Village of Orlando Incorporated, which is a partnering organization of the church that emphasizes and concentrates on economic development and housing. We have uh, accomplished uh, purchasing over four or five different apartment complexes and 25 to 40 different houses. Um, through several different governmental programs and, uh, and also we purchased them all. So we've got a whole lot of things that we're doing to provide economic development in our area. Very good. Greta? Um, I'm Greta Karens from the SCI Companies. I spent the first 13 years of my life um, in educational realm, um, worked in overseas schools, worked with Army Education Centers for Adult Education and have transferred a lot of that information to the HR realm because what is HR but adult education? <laughs> it makes perfect business sense. Very, very good. Bishop? Bishop Ed Stevens, uh, Senior Pastor of Golden Gate Cathedral for 25 years. I'm a fifth generational minister or pastor and uh, we have impacted the community. Matter of fact, our theme of our, our ministry is we exist so that lives may be transformed by Christ and transformation can take place in the community. And so one of the ways that we have really impacted the community, community is through the children and through our charter school. And I'm the CEO of our development corporation, which is the arm to which <clears throat> our school comes under. So we're really excited about the success that we've had with our school and how wonderful these children have performed. We're just, just really grateful for our ability to be able to impact from that dimension. Phenomenal. Phenomenal. Henry? Oh, thank you. Um, I'm Henry Harden. I'm the uh, founder of the SCI Companies. We started in 1985. I'm also a high school coach in my spare time. Uh, my, primary, my primary duties, though, focus around consulting with the leadership and the executives within our company and also within our client base, which, you know, finds it very, very exciting to, to be out there in that community. Phenomenal. Attorney. I'm Tacita Michael Scott, and I am the founder and chief executive officer of Keystone, a Scott Legal Group. And I founded Keystone to focus exclusively on servicing the legal needs of religious institutions. Very good. Michael. I'm Michael Rabarski. I'm the chairman of Life Change Marketing and Strategy. And we focus on uh, bringing uh, tools that have been pioneered in other industries to help smaller companies deal with changing world issues. So I did my first turnaround when I was 25 years old. And 
I've been an officer of uh, Fortune 100 New York Stock Exchange companies. In every situation, I see the same challenge. The world's changing faster than people are. Whether it's in the church or in publishing or in uh, transportation, the world's changing. You have to accept it, you have to embrace it. And that's the message we try to bring to our clients. That's powerful. I want to compliment what you said about changing. And the world has definitely changed. I say in hyperspeed, you know, at the speed of thought, the speed of reality. Like if you can think it is manifesting somewhere on the planet right now. And in this part of the discussion, just jump in here and I'm going to point it back at you. In the next 90 days, give churches, small businesses, organizations, whoever's listening, something they can do to change and reposition their organization, something practical. Well, I, I think the first thing they can do immediately is, is probably contact uh, some of the resources that are available to them through a larger groups. The idea is there are professionals who can say, you know what, you don't have to do this alone. Sitting in, one of the biggest barriers that we see to change is people know they have to change, they don't know how. So they're uh, paralyzed that says, where do I go? I know if I keep doing this, I'm going off a cliff but they don't know how to find someone who can get them to say turn left or turn right. Those resources are available, and I'd say the first thing to do is contact organizations like your own where they can find resources to help them address those deep-seated change issues. Absolutely. You know, I have to go back to um, during the next 90 days, praying and fasting so that the church will gain an understanding and an appreciation that it is a business and that it can adopt business principles to make the church successful. And so to just spend that time understanding the dynamics of what it means to be God's business, the most important business on earth far more important than anything that a Fortune 500 is doing. And once they gain that understanding, then reach out to professionals. Surround yourself with the right group. Form the necessary consortium so that you will have the, um, the ability to engage professionals and, 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 and allow those professionals to help to shape the vision of the church, to help to grow the vision of the church in line with what God reveals through the prayer and fasting. I, I would say one of the unique things they have to do is look beyond the congregation as a revenue source. They have to look out into the business community, not just as a revenue source, but also to assist their congregation. And I give you examples like why not align with you know, a, a temporary company where people are looking for jobs. Congregation, the biggest thing that's going on with congregations now is the unemployment. So why not fulfill the needs there through headhunters, through you know, temporary agencies or placement agencies? Why not have outplacement? Because typically those places will pay if you find somebody in their place. So why not pay the church? And th they meet two needs there. They find someone that gets employed within their congregation and they make a fee. Other outreach programs like that, I see where they can supplement their, their revenue source, but they're going to have to reach out, look beyond that traditional paradigm of just waiting for revenue to hit the plate. Absolutely. And you can, that solution you just offered, you can, you can assist with that? Oh, everyone. Yeah, okay. in, in any, any company within our industry would look to that. Very, very powerful. Bishop, 90 days. 90 days. Um, I think that you're going to have to, it's going to have to start with the leader. Now, again, let me just bring my, my, uh, experience out, in, out in, in the church market because the further you have to go even in the rural area the more intimidated we, we say things that sound good but but there's something else that we, I, I really want to be able to share with people and that is because you're in this gear of neutral and getting you to the gear of drive because even when and I, we pray we're getting ready to have a 21 day fast right at the beginning of the year when we get through praying when we get through fasting and I know some people pray fast, speak in tongues, and we've done all of that, and they still right. stuck right there because they don't apply the no, business acumen. We got that acumen. down, Pat. We got we that got down, <laughs> Pat. And when we get up, we thing. still are like, well, what do we do? Right. And I guess the intimidation factor is, is what concerns me, and they don't know. I mean, they're even watching right now, but which one of us do they call? first you know who do I need to call uh, so that I can really tap in and, and so but if you don't get out and meet people and get outside of your circle 
uh, the, the, the law that we need to know as attorney has shared with us, we will just be behind the eight ball. You know, you got to get with somebody else that's going somewhere. So I'm going to say within the first in the next 90 days, you got to snap yourself out of it and, you know, and just come on and get with another group. That's wake up. <laughs> wake up. <laughs> something to happen. Different. <laughs> Shake yourself Let's right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, Greta Henry, we've been having this conversation, you know, yeah. and we've been talking about um, repositioning and ministry repositioning. And what came to me um, was this whole MRI initiative. We're championing this MRI. You know, before a physician, a healer, can give you a diagnosis and a prescription, he's got to do an MRI many times. They've got to see what's going on on the inside. You can't reposition until you are willing to, to say to some people, you know what, I don't have it all together. Right. Right. You know, but I'm on that. So we are centralized. What you said, who's going to champion it? We're championing it right now. We, you in, Doc. We're not going backwards, Bishop. <laughs> right, right. We believe we're going to help thousands of churches with this MRI initiative, Ministry Repositioning Initiative. 90 days. 90 days, the first thing is you've got to embrace change and That's stop it. fighting it. That's embrace it. it. And once you've embraced it, once again, look for the synergies that are created outside of your realm of knowledge. You have those core competencies that you're good at, but if you put together the core competencies of many organizations, you will have a much higher performance work team and working unit that outreaches to many, many more. So don't be afraid of breaking down those walls. Those walls are keeping you hostage. And instead of being a hostage person in your own realm, break down those walls, seek outside individuals that will help you gain more momentum. Because once the momentum starts, then you're ready to move forward and you can leverage the resources and tools out there. But you gotta break down those walls and embrace that change. You know, truly embrace it so that you can move forward. Very good. Bishop, could I just say one Absolutely. thing? Absolutely. Going to the point you were making, Bishop, the, the idea that it's hard for the, the, the smaller churches maybe to say, snap out of it and all this. I would just say, everybody listening to this, don't feel like this is a message to you. If we were in a boardroom of a billion dollar company, I've been saying the same thing and they're having a hard time. Exactly. So it's not just about somehow you're feeling like you're alone in this church and you don't know where to go. This issue of having to embrace change is a message that's being delivered everywhere you go from the small companies to the medium-sized companies to the big ones and it's certainly true here so it's not just a mission a, a message targeted at churches it's a message that would be appropriate everywhere in america it's a global message right? it is a global, a global message, message. Absolutely. bishop 90 days 90 days um i must hitch my wagon to the good counselor as well as uh bishop stevens when we talk about prayer and fasting, that suggests that God has something to do with our vision. And what I'm seeing in the marketplace is many of us are chasing dated visions. Mm -hmm. We oftentimes do what God told us to do and we become committed and loyal to that. But what is God telling us to do? 